Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I've been wanting to play around with Mid Journey for a while now. Mid Journey, if you don't know what it is, according to the official uh, Wikipedia definition, is an independent research lab that produces a proprietary artificial intelligence program that creates images from textual descriptions. But basically, yeah, you tell the program, in this case, it is uh, used on Discord. So you go on Discord, you create your account or whatever, and then you tell the program what you want to see. So you start a prompt, you tell it, for instance, I want to see cute cats around a Christmas tree. And then it gives you four images that look pretty much like what you described. Some will be better than others. Um, some will sometimes be a little bit strange. Uh, maybe one of the cat has become a Christmas tree and it's not exactly what you wanted. But overall, you'll get what you asked for and then you can tell it, I really like this first quadrant or the second one or whichever tile of the four you like, you can upscale and get a better resolution image, a more detailed one. Uh, or if you're like, oh, I really like this one, but I wish the cat were wearing red bows, uh, then maybe you can do a variation on that image. You can say, I want a variation on the third tile and I want it to have this instead. And then it gives you another four tiles, etc., etc. I hope I've explained this correctly. Um, if you're not sure, go Google it. I have been wanting to play around with my journey to create covers for all of my projects, which I didn't do. I created covers for a few of my projects. So I thought I would take you through a little bit of this process and me basically creating the imagery through mid journey and then uh, sort of putting it into a cover, a cover format with you know the proper type and everything. Um, Disclaimer, I am a graphic designer by day, however, I do not design book covers, which is a specific type of graphic design. Some people absolutely specialize in this. I do something completely different. Therefore, please do not judge me based on this. This was just for fun. This was just for myself. Um, who knows, maybe if I end up deciding to self-publish one of these, I may actually use the cover that I uh, designed through Midjourney. Okay, so this is sort of the setup. Uh, you can see that I'm on Discord here. And basically, let me, you know, I'm clicking on just a couple of things, but you can go from the Discord to your own Midjourney page and see all of the artwork that you have created through Midjourney. And here I'm just taking you through the very first ones I did. Um, this is for Lockhart and Beckett, aka Project Rose, which I just recently finished uh, writing. And these were just some vague descriptions of I wanted a woman in front of her, an elevator with gold engravings on it. And this is sort of what I got. It was very artsy. I had no idea what I was doing at the time. And it was my very first time using Mid Journey. And I wasn't even using the proper version. I think these images that I'm showing you now, I was actually using version four, which is the latest version of Mid Journey. While the first images I showed you before, I I wasn't, I had no idea what, uh, how to properly use it, which prompt to, um, to say to get the right thing. And also there's a lot of little tags that you can add to it that you learn through the Discord, like just by observing what other people are doing. Um, so a lot of these are just different art pieces that I created at the very beginning beginning and you'll see by by the end of this video I'm actually getting rid of some of those because I'm like oh I've learned since then and this is not um this is not my favorite anymore I I know how to do this better at this point so here I'm just trying to prep some of the covers using uh these images this is the very beginning of me doing this and I'm just uh figuring out even just the the name of this project uh which I ended up naming Lockhart and Beckett which is the name of the agency where my main character works at but originally I just had the name of my character so it was just called Project Rose since my main character is named Rose uh so I was just trying to figure out the typeface the layout where I wanted things to go I played around with it for quite a bit which funnily enough this cover did not make make the cut of my favorite ones by the end um but this gives you a, a small idea of what the process was like just um you know struggling a little bit at the beginning figuring out what i wanted to do this was just me playing around with it originally and figuring out as you can see now i finally decided to name it lockhart and beckett um and just wanted to get the typeface right really 
I think for this first cover, I really want to do something a little bit Art Deco style, so I just played around with some things. Again, it's sort of funny watching this when I know that this was not one of my favorite ones at all by the end, uh, but I did like what I did at the time. <laughs> it was also, as I said, my very first iterations of uh, art through Mid Journey. I was still using the free version. I ended up paying for a subscription in order to do more, you know, pieces of art as I went because I realized to get exactly what you want sometimes you have to go through like a hundred different iterations like constantly um, adding on variations to one that you sort of like but isn't exactly right or maybe you really like it but for some reason it gave that guy's hand six fingers instead of five so you just really have to struggle through a little bit of uh, the process in order to get the cover that you really want. I still really like this piece of art uh, representing my character Rose stepping into the lift that goes to the upper floors uh, where the secret part of the agency, the, the supernatural investigators are located in, in this tower. So like the bottom part under floor 13 are all human people who have no idea what's going on. And then you go above floor 13 and that's where you have um, the supernatural floors, let's say. So I did a few different versions of this. I was trying a few different types of art. And once again, I hadn't figured out V4 yet. And I believe this cover was actually using V4 and I really really liked it I really liked just having an actual face on it and it just reminded me a lot more of what you get when you buy you know like those pretty those really nicely done self-published books um or it just gave me a little bit more young adult vibes even though this is not an, a young adult novel it's more of a new adult novel but um again the publishing world does not recognize the official the traditional publishing world does not recognize uh, that uh, category <laughs> so I hear I'm trying to fix a little bit of uh, her arms and just the background because I didn't want that typeface. So obviously Midjourney does not really handle type exactly as you want it to if you want it to write anything. So don't count on, on Midjourney to do that for you. It will do this sort of alien uh, mixed up version of fake words and and letters uh, which is really funny sometimes and really interesting so I just got rid of that and just replaced it with the, the right colors and everything on photoshop so that I could then put the right title and I really like this cover Lockhart and Beckett tome one the secrets of the unveiled uh, I'm not even sure I kept the wording by the end but this gives you an idea here we're now scrolling through um, another of my projects, which is actually my most recent concept because I haven't done anything with it yet except outline a little bit of it. And I'm potentially going to work on this one for January, uh, January Remo. Uh, but basically at the moment it doesn't have a title. So I was trying to figure out what to call it. It's pretty much Space Princess on the Run or Space Princess Projects. And that's what I ended up with, I think, here. Uh, again, trying to find the right typeface. I download a lot of mine on Envato, which I do pay a subscription for, because once again, I am a graphic designer by day, but there's plenty of free to use typefaces out there, uh, especially on websites like Dafont, etc. You just got to check the, the copyrights you're using are correct and that uh, depending on what you do with, with it. So obviously here, it's just for a video. I'm not making money out of this, so it's fine. Uh, but I did pay for um, my subscription to Envato, so I can use the typefaces basically. Uh, so yeah, I was just trying to figure out what font to use for this one and, and what title I wanted. Originally I was like Space Princess on the run because that's pretty much, that tells you everything you need to know about the story. Um, and then I just got rid of the on the run because I just didn't like the space that it took uh, and then I replaced it with projects in the end because it's again um, work in progress and a work in progress title as well. Uh, but I really wanted to sort of emulate those, those styles of um, self-published uh, sci-fi novels. So this is very much a sci-fi romance. And when they're well done, I fucking love a good sci-fi romance that has been self-published. It's it's my vibe. So for this, that first one you just saw, that's what I was trying to do here. I was experimenting a lot more with styles with my journey and I ended up with this version that I loved. I absolutely loved it. It made me think a lot more of um, young adults, traditionally published book covers. Um, and I just really enjoyed this style. The, the look and feel of this is perfect. And basically, 
I just did a few iterations for all of my projects. So uh, all of the ones that you're going to see there, I did a few different versions based on the different covers, um, cover art that I did with Mid Journey. And some of them are widely different from one another. And some of them are literally a tiny change from one cover to the other. So you'll see. Uh, but yeah, here you can see some of the other stuff that I got done with Mid Journey, trying to get the right um, the right cover art. And some of them are completely weird and like the face is really mushed up. Uh, if you pose on some of those, you'll see. Some of them, the style just got, it got a little bit too specific as I upscaled the picture and it just wasn't the right um, art style, if that makes sense. But yeah, I was trying to get the right image for this. So, um, here I've moved on. I'm doing this thing for Project Ghost, which is another one of my projects. Uh, I'm just trying to, I'm going to go again on Envato, trying to find typefaces that I think would be right for this. And I'm also going on Amazon, getting some inspiration from uh, self-published paranormal romance books. Um, basically, Project Ghost is very much in an urban fantasy uh, novel that I have outlined and started working on. Uh, so it's a more... It's a more developed outline than some of my other ones, but I haven't written it either. So this is just yet yeah, another one that I was trying to get inspiration for, uh, just to get a good cover here. And once again, struggling to find the right typeface. Um, I didn't want to put too much effort into doing all the swishes and swishes. <laughs> That's not the proper technical term, but whatever, you know what I mean, uh, myself for the type. So I was trying to find a typeface that came with the swirls um, and that would just look right basically for this. So as you can tell, I'm, I'm trying to emulate here that look and feel that you have of paranormal romance books, urban fantasy books, uh, a lot of them on Kindle Unlimited uh, very often. Version 4 of Mid Journey uh, did not have different um, different ratios, so you could only have basically a square tile, uh, even if it was, you know, higher uh, quality, higher resolution, but it now has more than just the square ratio you can you can use different ratios now so at the time it did not so i had to sort of uh fake a lot of you know my skies and stuff like that for most of these just to make them bigger so with photoshop i just fiddle around with it a little bit just to um have more sky so that i could have space for the typeface to come in so that i could have space for the book title basically to come in So I'm just going back from that original prompt, uh, describing what I want. So I wanted a blonde female swordsman. This is one of the recommendation uh, people say is if you want someone who's holding a sword, don't say woman holding sword, try and come up with a one word description. So swordsman is better, but then you want the swordsman to be a woman, just say female swordsman. That's going to be your best bet to to kind of get what you want. Um, sometimes I end up with things like bottom left here, uh, medieval clothing. And so I have to sort of add back in modern clothing or leather jacket or be a little bit more specific about what I want. Um, so yeah, that's sort of what you get. And then in order to in order to get the high res, uh, I go back on my mid journey page and then download the image in the highest in the highest resolution possible. You can basically feed the uh, the app as well. You can feed it images. So what you do is then you you upload the image to your private chat with the bot and then you right click on it and you use the link as part of your prompt and it will play around with this.
Um, and then I think I'm moving on to Margot the Witch, which is another one of my projects that has a good amount of outlining done, um, a lot of character study done, and I could technically use this one as well in January if I wanted to start uh, with January Mo. So that's another one that I am interested. Again, most of these don't have don't have real titles. They're just uh, project titles. Like Margot the Witch is just my main character. It's not going to be the title of this book. It's just uh, an easier way to know which book I'm talking about. Um, I really loved the results, all of the results I got for Margot the Witch, even though some of them are absolutely not right for the character. A lot of the time I ended up with things that were a little bit more medieval looking or things like that. And it is happening in the modern world. It is a more urban fantasy or contemporary fantasy. So I wouldn't actually want her to look more medieval, but it sort of still worked with the, the vibe that I was trying to achieve, the look and feel basically. Uh, so again, I really like that swirly typeface I had used before for Project Ghost. So I reused it here. And um, I think afterwards I, I copied and pasted it on a couple of other iterations of this cover. Then we're finally getting to my very first baby, uh, The Art of Summoning Demons. So I did a few covers for this, quite a lot actually, and it sort of makes sense that I did more for this project than any other because that is the book that is the closest to being absolutely finished. So currently I have the feedback from my critique partners and I just need to um, start doing the last bit of revision before I can do the line edits. Um, for The Art of Summoning Demons, I was trying first to really go with the kind of cover I would expect to do if this were traditionally published. Uh, so I really love this idea of a little bit more art deco. Um, it's just, it, it looks right, the line work and everything. And then I thought I would try a little bit of a um, carving style because I saw some people do this again on the app and it really inspired me. And I thought I really like those types of cover, uh, the cover arts that are a little bit more fake wooden um, engravings and, and just embossing and things like that. This is what I tried for this as well. It's a little bit darker in look and feel, um, but I still think it works with the story. So I did end up doing also covers that had faces on them and, you know, like character and more comic book style once again, because I wanted a set by the end of covers that I could put all together, uh, which you'll see by the end of this video. But um, that's why I started with you know, these, this look and feel. And then I ended up also doing similarly to the previous ones um, with a person, with my main character on the cover. Um, I'm also going back to do some extra work on Margot the Witch because I ended up doing a couple more iterations. Sometimes you, get, you just get the right inspiration or sometimes you see some prompt that someone has been using. Like I think for this one, someone was using a bright colors prompt, uh, wording as part of their prompt. And I thought that was brilliant. I really wanted to do something like that to get more of the idea of magic, I guess. Uh, so I went back on this one and did a little bit more of it. And I did this throughout the week. So funnily enough, this video took me ages to do and you can see a lot of different images popping up in between the different prompts for this video because I would every now and then be like, oh, I need to do some more or I've got a better idea. I've got a better handle on the AI now. I know how to get the results that I want now while well, before I didn't. So I kept going back and forth. Uh, and this is what I'm doing now. I'm, I was trying to get Olive, my main character from The Art of Summoning Demons. I really loved this uh, drone character style. I thought that was perfect. And the, the feel of Autumn and her being in college and everything, it was perfect. The only thing and the reason why I went back again after this is because there was no element of magic here, apart from the title, The Art of Summoning Demons. Nothing in this cover tells you that this is going to be um, a book of, you know, paranormal, uh, that is going to have elements of magic and, you know, uh, witches and things like that. So 
I, as much as I loved all of these options, the drawings, the drawing style was great. It made me think this would be great if she was, if this was written as a comic book instead of uh, just a novel. Um, I ended up going back again to add elements of magic to this prompt a little bit later on, and I'll add these covers as well. So I loved, loved this version that I got from Midjourney and just added a little bit of a more, more top to my image so that once again, it would fit in the right format and I could have space for my uh, book title at the top. And then finally, I'm doing the same thing I did uh, with The Art of Summoning Demons to Lockhart and Beckett, which is I went back um, to redo some of these covers because I once again wanted a little bit of a set with, you know, my main characters' um, faces on the covers and also had figured out how to use Midjourney so much better by that point than I had at the very beginning. And I was using version four instead of version three. And there were so many things that I, I finally figured out. Here you can tell that Midjourney once again gave me a sixth finger. It, it does that a lot. So I was trying to fix it because I really like the rest of this image and the face um, of this person was just so close to my character Rose that I was just like, okay, I just need to fix this myself. And you can tell I'm struggling a tiny bit because although I am using Photoshop, um, I'm using my touchpad. So here is the covers that I ended up doing. Uh, the first one's for Lockhart and Beckett um, with my character Rose. Then we get to the Space Princess project. Uh, you can tell I love the back of a character that always works really well for me. I don't have to worry about what face is on, what they look like. Uh, so this is all for the space one. I had quite a few that I really liked the art of. Then Project Ghost, um, which again, I think some of these early ones are actually using version three uh, and not version four of Mid Journey, but I still really liked some of those results, especially the more young adult look and feel one. And then Mogo the Witch, I have quite a few that I really loved. Uh, I tried to, to cut some of them, but these were some of my favorites. And then we get to the Art of Summoning Demons, my baby, um, <laughs> my final one in this case. But I did so many iterations because there were so many that just worked really well, I thought. Just gave different uh, vibes to the book, G gives you basically a different idea of what the book is going to be about. Um, but I loved all of these, which is why I kept all of these in the final version of, uh, of this selection. And then I mocked up a few versions uh, as actual paperback book covers uh, just to see what that would look like. It's not the best mock-up that I selected, but it just sort of works for me. I just wanted to see a few of those, my favorite ones. And then I think I did just one of, um, just a shot of my favorite, favorite ones all together, which looks really nice. So here's uh, a few still Project Ghost. And then Margot the Witch. And then... I think after that is, what came after that? I can't remember. Oh yeah, The Art of Summoning Demons, of course. So here's some of my favorite ones. That one works so well, the one with the wood carving. Uh, I really like it, uh, but I just love the comic book style. It was just, they all looked really nice together. Here you can tell, there you go. These were my favorite ones. Like all of all the iterations I've done, these were my absolute favorites. And there you have it. Um, this is it. I just wanted to show you what you can do with something like that if you don't particularly want to or feel like paying uh, someone else to do 
an art piece for you that may not be what you want exactly or just you don't have the money for it keeping in mind that actually mid journey you do have to pay for a subscription if you want to have the full use of it and especially if you want to play around a lot with the same image you're gonna end up having to pay for the subscription anyway um but personally it was just for the fun of it i really wanted to test it there's so many things that you can do with it and I get that this is gonna garner a few, you know, comments about the ethical uh, use of it and just in general how people feel about our robots taking over the jobs of people, things like that. I have a few opinions about this. I'm not sure I'm gonna get into it fully here. I would just say this. First of all, you can tell this took me a couple of weeks at least to finish everything that I wanted and I kept going back and back and back and back because I hadn't figured out how to use Midjourney at the beginning. After one day, I didn't know how to use it. So it, you still need a person behind it, is my point. And there are people using Midjourney that then go on to sell their art or put it in, up in a gallery. There is a use of this. My point is that it is a tool. It is not the artist. And you still need an artist or a person who has an artistic eye to use this tool the same way that people were extremely upset when photography first started and they were like well what's the point of a painter then who's going to paint portraits now if we have you know photographs anyone any idiot can use a camera and do the job and snap a picture it's not true you have artist photographs and then you have everyday people who also use their cameras but the two are different and you still have people who have a job that is specifically linked to using a camera the same camera maybe that any regular person could own and not know how to use to create art the same way so i hope i'm making my point correctly and that you get where i'm trying to to go here the point being that it doesn't take away from the artistry of people and i think it is a tool to use and that some people can really use it to their advantage however you still have to learn how to use it like any program so i'm a graphic designer by day i use mostly in design um, because i do a lot of uh, published work so things like annual reports uh, i used to work in magazines so I understand that the way the job works now is through a program that I had to learn how to use. But originally people were putting all of these things together meticulously on paper and then just, you know, copying what the main version that they had done. It was just a different way of working and that didn't stop them from evolving with, you know, the programs evolving with the time and still keeping their jobs. I'm not saying Mid Journey is the future of art. I don't think so. I don't think it will ever replace artists. And you also have to remember mid journey feeds off the existing art that i can find it's gonna it's gonna feed off you know the current things that are that are out there so you constantly have to feed it and give it new things and give it more art at least that's how i see it um i hope that that makes sense and that if you disagree that's absolutely fine and if you want to have a debate about it I would have a lot of fun discussing this because I think it's a fascinating topic. Uh, but yeah, I personally had a lot of fun doing these covers. I'm also myself an illustrator on the side. Not that I make money out of it, it's just a hobby, it's not a side job, but I enjoy doing art myself and therefore I still see it as a completely different tool for me to use. So yeah, I hope that makes sense and I hope that you enjoyed watching this and that you like all of these covers and everything. Uh, if you did enjoy this video and if you'd like to see more of it, because I'm definitely gonna do more of Mid Journey stuff, Feel free to subscribe to my channel, ring that bell, all that jazz. You can also like the video and comment. I always try to respond to all the comments under my videos. So yeah, hope you had a good time here and I'll see you in the next one.